And here we are standing in the middle of the elevator lobby on the 11th floor of the Royal Fairmount Hotel. And thus begins the journey that is called Apex Weekend. And I just checked in and I'm on my way to my room. I don't know what time it is, I think it's like 4.30 or something. And it starts at 6, so I have enough time to get ready. Well, let's see what room I'm in. I am in 11 79. Let's so I don't even know where that is. I think there are, oh, sign on the wall, 148 to 154. Nope, I must be on the other side then. It's so nice in here, look at the carpet and the nice walls and very ornate. Look at the chandelier on the roof. That is so sweet. Damn. Okay, on numbers. Yes, I am this way. Oh, but such a long hallway. Imagine like sprinting down here. It's amazing when you run down the hallways, this is like a narrow space. It always smell no, like gives the illusion that you're running really fast. So if you ever feel like you don't run fast and you want like a boost of esteem, um, just run down the uh, hotel hallway and you'll get what you need. You'll get that nice confidence boost in your ability to run. All right, now comes the fork in the road. Turn right, 173 to 181. Oh yeah, oh, I love that hotel smell. It's, it's so nice, so bliss. All right, coming to the end of the hallway. Oh, I think I passed. I was fancy right at Apex now with our non-alcoholic drinks. No, no, no. We got cranberry and Sprite. I got orange juice and cranberry. Great, and now we're seeking with you want me to take it? Hey, Brianna. Do you want me to take it? Uh, oh, no, no, we're not taking it. It's a video. We're vlogging. Oh, God. Oh, God. Get out of the way. You were in one before, though. So, yeah, we're just mixing and being built icebreakers right now. And now, we're actually being really rude right now because someone's talking. So, but you don't like it very much, right? Oh, shit. You want to put that on video? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. See you later. We're going to forego the podium to stand out here with you so we can really interact. Uh, thank you for that lovely introduction. I always think when I, especially in the last couple of years, when I hear these introductions, and it does sound like a lot of achievement, and that's just a function of how old I am. I promise all of you, when you get to be my age, you will have a list even longer than that. Um, what I thought I would do is spend, you know, 15 minutes sharing a few perspectives with you, and then let's do this as question and answer. I've been in business a long time. I've been an entrepreneur all of my life. And so I'm going to share my perspectives as an entrepreneur. So from that point of view, after I do the, the sort of 15 minutes of sharing some, some, some uh, thoughts with you, we can really have a great discussion on any single uh, question that anybody in the room might want to raise. And just so I get a sense, how many people in the room are from Toronto, either at Schulich or University in Toronto? So the majority. And then Vancouver? <laughs> British Columbia? Okay, let's do it that way. British Columbia. Alberta? Anybody from Alberta? Anybody from Saskatchewan? No. Anybody from Quebec? Oh, nice. Anybody from out east? Nova Scotia? New Brunswick? No? Okay, so primarily British Columbia and Ontario. I just want to know how many indigo and chapter shoppers there are in the room. <laughs> and what the basic array. So I have a different question for you. And you have to tell the truth here, because I'm going to tell the truth when I talk to you. How many people shop at either an Indigo or shop chapters at least once a quarter? Yes. <laughs> 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 Solitary industry is being reshaped. And the time when you can have the most rewarding work, and by the way, when you can make the most financial gain, is at a moment like this when so much is in flux. The most valuable companies, most of the most valuable companies on the planet have been formed in the last 10 to 15 years. And many of them in the last six or seven years. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And almost every news-making company that you hear about, whether it's Google or it's Facebook, or it's Uber. Do you know about Uber? Do people here know about Uber? Who knows about Uber? Okay, so Uber. So for those of you who don't know, Uber is in a very simple business. They're in the taxi business. Who would have thought that you could make a fortune 
by reinventing the taxi business. Who would have thought that? I guarantee there isn't a single business case at any business school that records that you can reinvent and create huge value in the taxi business. I didn't actually know you look. Yo, Winnie, how are you? Oh my god, your lipstick. You're famous for that red lipstick. You're gonna come with us? Oh, you too. That those piercing lips. You want a piece? You want a piece of this girl? It's huh? I like you're you're famous for your lipstick. I like it. He always makes fun of me for my lipstick. How do I mean? I don't think I've ever even commented on your lipstick before. Yeah, you have. You're like you're like you and your bright red lipstick. Okay, true. Dude. I'm co I said the compliment. I like it. Every time I go out, I wear lipstick. Yeah, like back in Niagara Falls when she parties. No, I, I just wear lipstick when I go out. And he's like, he's like, Winnie, every single picture you take when you go out, I guess. Like, like, I'm not gonna lie, the shade, the shade of it makes it like, it, like a spelt or something. Like, it looks like it has texture to it. It's cool. And you put it on so precisely, like, on your lips. It's, it's, it's really nice, I like it. Nice jacket. Imagine your lipstick. Imagine if you were wearing the jacket right now. What? And I have red heels too. Maybe you can oh wear my them. God. Not, not now. Come on, That's cool. Michelle. Are you excited to go to the club? I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Everybody excited? Everybody excited? Have you ever been? Yeah. No, I actually haven't. Never. Candy bar? No. All right. Well, it's a good experience. I've only been to like two. I've been two times to the same bar. And how was that experience? It was fun. Like it's an interesting experience. Like I wouldn't do like you know every weekend. Yeah. It's just like once in a while. It's just like this occasion right now. So. I expect to have fun. She has a red jacket too. Nice jacket. Oh, I'm like, like the lipstick and like all that jazz. Damn. The color variety is strong. Yeah. Alright, let's go to the bar now. Here we are. Day two, the morning of, first morning of Apex. And good morning to you, Francie. How are you today? I'm quite well, thank you very much. Great, great, great. Yeah, we're all gathering. Yeah, did you have a good sleep last night? I slept like a wild boar. I snore voraciously and my roommates probably hate me. Yeah, and that usually what happens to boars, right? They, they storm in the middle of the night, they get tracked down by the predator, and then they get slain, right? And consumed. And consumed. But you didn't get consumed. I'm still kicking. Until maybe tomorrow night. Perhaps. So yeah, exciting. I'm, I feel so refreshed and rejuvenated. Usually I'm not like that at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I got some excitement. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a car inside here. Yeah, the car over there. Like I was thinking, like how in the world will they manage to sneak that into well, not sneak, but like get that into the Royal Fairmont Hotel. Is we're it on, possible? We're not even on the first floor. I'm under the impression that they assembled the car in this very hotel. I think that's a very plausible yes. like reason. Yes, I think so. But like still, that would require a lot of handiwork to assemble a car in a hotel. Like, who would do that? This be the Fairmont. Are, Everything is possible. Are there people out there whose profession it is to assemble cars in very obscure places? That. Yeah. It's a big world, Japan. And there are jobs out there that we have never heard of. So assembling cars and hotels might just be one of those jobs. So we are set up for a day of workshops with keynote speakers, a food, good food. That's all we're here. Yeah. Right. And speed networking session. So I'm excited. What workshop are you going to do? Um, all the recommended ones like Pepsi, Mastercard, LinkedIn. Gastro? No, no. Uh, uh, and uh, and yeah, I'll just marketing for the company too. Good. I am the other hand. I'm going to the accounting one. PwC, KPMG, and then Speed uh, Networking. He's about the accounting life, whereas I'm about the marketing life. I'm about that. I didn't choose the accounting life, though. The accounting life chose me. Oh, and how, how about you, though? I chose the marketing life. Oh, and the marketing life also chose me. So it's mutual. It was mutual. It was it's like, like, it's like a mutual relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's more one-sided. Like, I do all the communication, they don't reciprocate. Hopefully one day they'll uh, see how beautiful I am. You need to I see am. a marriage counselor. Why is that? Because they're not communicating with the I made a bad oh, job. I need, I, I need a C in here. Yeah. I thought you said I need a B one. Like, okay, are, well, are married counselors people who themselves have gone through bad relationships and like kind of compensate it's very for that? Possible. Yeah, alright. My arm's getting tired, so I can start for it now. But uh, yeah, peace. Foghorn for a boy. So I guess like, we're going to put that one to the test today. Can you tell me? Can you hear at the back? Yeah. Okay, so that's perfect. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the kind uh, introduction, and I'll put a little bit of a commercial on maybe to start with. Uh, uh, this year, I'm also the co-chair for the Enbridge Ride for Cancer uh, here in Ontario, and that's the one that goes, a uh, cycling event that goes from Niagara Falls to Toronto. So for any of you or any of your friends to sign up for that, uh, we're going to have a great time, and that's again another way I think uh, that, that's important, and I think that does define some greatness.
which is giving back to our communities in which we work and live. Anyway, it's great to be here with everyone today, uh, and thank you very much for inviting me. I'm always energized when I get to talk to students, uh, because uh, you've got lots of energy, you usually have lots of questions, now they started, uh, and when they were talking uh, to my assistant, I guess it was a couple of months ago, they said, well, Bill will talk for an hour, and she says, no, 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 Bill won't talk for an hour, he doesn't like to do that, but what he will do is he'll talk for maybe 15 minutes or so, and then we're gonna take some Q&A. And that's what happens to most people. If you look at the ones that ended up being successful in the eyes of society, oftentimes it's the ones that love what they do. Now the second quality for me that you need for greatness is dedication or what I call staying power. And the author Matt Malcolm Gladwell I think popularized the 10,000 hour theory in his 2008 best-selling book Outlier. And what Gladwell was talking about is it takes 10,000 hours of practice in any discipline to become an expert in that field. You know, lots of people have phenomenal natural ability, but the really top performers, the most successful people, are those rare few, and those rare few that achieve greatness, are those who put the hours and the sweat into it. Because it may change. And reflect on the path, the point, that how you do things is often as important as what you do. Now repeat that, how you do things is often as important as what you do. I'd say let life happen. I never knew that I'd be standing here in front of you in 1980 when I joined the firm. Go with the flow, enjoy the moment, and think about how you'll make others even more successful. Four, build diverse networks of successful people will be honest about your strengths and your weaknesses and use others to complement those strengths and weaknesses. Nobody has it all, but as teams, we're far more successful than we are as individuals. And lastly, I'll come back to one, two of my key ingredients. Be dedicated to and passionate about what you do. Because if you're passionate and you work hard, if you care and are focused, I know that each one of you will be successful. So thank you very much, and I'm now pleased to take any questions. All right, so it's 5.30 and I'm back in my hotel room and we just finished a whole bunch of uh, events. So we did like a workshop and then we did like a a little networking session for an hour and a half was really nice uh, and then we had like a little speed dating not speed dating speed networking session where there's like six groups of like six and then like a rep and then we just like switched every five minutes it was very fast paced but so far it's been packed and now we're off to dinner soon and uh i'm just waiting for the bathroom to be unoccupied because max is in the washroom and i have to wash my hands and uh, wash my face because my face is so oily then we're gonna go down to a restaurant. I'm looking forward to that. The only reason I came is for the food, right? No, I'm kidding. No, I'm actually uh, getting a lot of valuable thing from here. It's great meeting some great people. Yeah, uh, really nice view. Look at this. So look at the tower over there. It's like has a great, cool, unique shape to it. Flat on one side, then it's arched on the uh, other side. And then you see the highway from there. Yeah, nice skyline. Well, not really skyline. Just, I'm not tired. I got like a spell of exhaustion uh during the speed networking because we're just everyone's just talking so fast and people are coming and going and all that stuff beach kingdom coming and going look down there that's the union station entrance down there let me zoom in a bit but there's always people coming and going out of that union station and there's so much construction too it's like i can imagine all the congestion that builds up yeah uh what it looks like uh then i am talking way too much so i'm gonna stop talking now and uh Head to dinner. Oh, look at that beautiful sunset. Damn, it's like right on the horizon. And we're across the street. Hey, Deloitte building. 
All right, wow, okay, lots of people. All this car is trying to turn. All right, hi, hey, how are you? I'm good. Good, good, good. Ready for dinner? Yeah. Hungry, hungry. you built up an appetite? Yes, yeah, but I had a snack of chips and coffee. You had a what? I had a snack of chips and coffee. Oh, did you bring them yourself? No, it was in our swag bag. Oh. Sorry? It was in the little bags that we got. We got chips in yeah. a bag? Yeah, the Walmart bags. No way. The Walmart bag? Yeah. The one that was dropped out this morning. Oh, this morning. Yeah, yeah, I didn't look through that. Well, I did. I did. Sorry? I got a chicken dinner. Yeah, yeah the microwave dinner, right? I'm vegetarian, so I don't have any Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait, oh, we're already here. That was a very quick walk. I thought it was going to be farther. Far niente. Far niente. It was not far at all, considering it's called far niente. Yeah. I'm hungry, and we're pouring into there, and then we're gonna go. So, are there any more? There's gonna be a keynote speaker, right? Yeah, I wonder if it's gonna be like audible since it's gonna probably be noisy in there. Wow, look how tall that building is. Ooh. Okay. I have a Twitter page. Go ahead, buddy. And I have LinkedIn. And then on top of that, when you start to Google me, you'll find out that these all mash together and some of them are consistent and some of them are kind of consistently inconsistent. You'll see some of my passions are very much my team. There's lots on us uh, about work and the crazy team. And this actually sh shot is of our team getting together. We're actually moving to new facilities. Uh, and, and this is a design meeting, so we're all in a room with a big, huge table, cutting out pictures for magazines, saying what we want our new place to look like. So that's what we're doing, and Boom is definitely one of my passions. And to be clear, while I love the work that we do, and I'm going to share with you some of that work, what I really love is the people that I work with. And I really can honestly say that, and you'll see I went over and tackled Cam when he was here, and it's heartfelt, and I really do love the people that you work with, and that's what makes the difference, and that's the reason that I get out of bed every day. And don't worry, it's not me running that area. We have nice, young, smart people who understand it. Uh, but watch us. We're, we're very committed to that direction. The most common question I'm asked these days is, how am I dealing with the anticipated uh, increase in competition? You all know that every retailer in America is excited to come to Canada. And the retail economy in the United States in the last five, six years has been terrible and they're all looking for horizons for growth. And they suddenly discovered what an incredible country we have here. Well, we've known that for a long time, haven't we? Um, in our sector, we have three major things happening. First of all, we have the advent of two of the major department stores. Nordstrom's is coming, which is a better end department store on the States, very large, very well run. And Saks Fifth Avenue, which is part of the American-owned Hudson's Bay Company. A lot of Canadians come, don't be fooled. Um, that coupled with the fact that a lot of our vendors are only opening, opening their own model brand stores. I don't know if you walk around York and you see all the Barbados and Ferragamo and all those different stores, but that's a big trend internationally as well. Um, so what people ask me, they say, what are you doing about all this new competition? And I like to tell them a story. And the story is about two men walking through the forest. Harry, you can guess his last name. The other one's called Pete. If you don't know Pete, his last name is Lewis. And they're walking through the forest, and they come into a clearing. They see a ferocious bear. And Pete says to Harry, he says, oh, Christ. We can't outrun a bear, Harry. Harry says, I don't need to outrun a bear, Pete. I just need to outrun you. Yeah. <laughs> Bar and Grill, right near Union Station. I've never been here before. Look how huge that screen is. That's so cool. That I swear, like, look at it. Look at the scale of people down there, and compared to like the size of the screen. I don't know if my voice can be heard though, but that is one huge screen, and uh, the resolution is amazing. And it's so cool how there's like a bunch of TVs surrounding it as well. So yeah, we're all gathered here. Yeah, we just had dinner. We uh, heard Larry Rosen speak, son of Harry Rosen. And uh, he's the CEO of Harry Rosen, as you can imagine. So we were given one ticket for a wine, a beer, or non-alcoholic drinks that night. 
And then later tonight, we might go to a club. I think that's off the record though. But yeah, fun day so far. I'm enjoying it. Good morning, last day of Apex. And it's early and I'm tired. Ugh. I went to bed like three last night. We got back from the club pretty dang late. And then I went to go get Timmy's after. Um, yeah, all of us went to Gravity and it was fun and we danced and we had a great time. Now it's the last day of Apex and I'm on like five hours of sleep. Now we're off to the restaurant for brunch and then we're gonna workshop for the day. Clothing family tonight and then another club tonight, which I'm so excited about to go. And when he's video bombing me in the back, but you know, I'm used to that right now. But I'm glad she's willing to brace the camera rather than just suppress it. Sorry? For the club? Yeah. Okay. Like one, two, and three o'clock. Oh wow, three o'clock. That is a late night at the club. Dang, I don't think I can uh, endure that that long at grab or a government, which I've never been. Oh well. Uh, at least it's a nice day outside, from what it looks like. I'm just ready for the cold to go away and school to end and the summer to begin. But first, we have to eat breakfast. And this one's actually one of my favorites. Jason Sweeney saying that in Canada, the best revenge is a nice fruit basket, but not the nicest fruit basket. <laughs> so if ever you know you really text somebody, you get them that subpar fruit basket, and they'll get your message across. <laughs> Justin Bieber, who was actually only recently surpassed by Katy Perry, is the individual with the top Twitter followers. However, with his latest antics, who knows maybe he'll come back on top. We can we can only hope. But ultimately what you're seeing here is these conversations are happening on Twitter and they're not just celebrity conversations, but it really gives you an opportunity as a user to get behind the curtain and to find out what people are saying and to participate in this conversation. From a corporate perspective, we're able to learn so much about individuals and how they use the tool based on their behavioral habits. And that's something that we talk to advertisers about quite significantly. We find that users are twice as likely to be using Twitter when you wake up, you know, you roll over, you flip through your phone, it's easy, the short 140 characters isn't too overwhelming in the early hours. It's what people are on when they're on their daily commute. It's what they're using under their desk sometimes, or on their desktop in their minimizing window, and it's where people are before they go to bed. And a big part of my job is really talking to brands right now about how they can leverage this content and really take it to align with their messaging. And what you see on the right hand side here, these are actually what people are talking about. They're talking about pantry, they're talking about peanut butter, they're talking about mayo, they're talking about shopping. So if you're an advertiser, what a great opportunity to find those people, actually step in and say, oh hey, like you're talking about mayo, why don't you try this new thing we have from Helmets? And that's part of the really fun stuff that we do at Twitter, is finding those alignments with corporations. Here we stand over the grand space of the lobby of the Royal Fairmont Hotel. And like I just said, I am beat. I am exhausted. But I endure because duty of the Apex Conference calls. And I must not submit to the tiredness that is trying to around me so uh, we're just waiting for the next workshop to begin we're just in that room over there for KPMG and that's where the next workshop is luckily for me since I don't have to do any traveling it's Bell and uh, there's gonna be like a three-hour career fair after but it's just like a networking session <laughs>
you know, she yeah, said... Yeah, I thought he was Jason. No, you are Jason. I am Jason. Oh, dang, I thought he was Jason. So we introduced each other, and she says, Sydney, but I thought it was Lindy. Yeah. And she thought my name was Jason, so we both yeah, mistakenly... I'll give you like two more minutes, and I'll be careful that you're doing Jason. Yeah, alright, so what's your name? Jason. Good job, you passed it. You could pass the friendship test. You are now eligible to be my friend. Oh, okay, good. So, yeah. It's so, an honor. So you're going to subscribe to my video? I want it. You're going to subscribe to my channel? Yeah. Good, yeah. She, she, the, when I, when I uh, mentioned vlogging, she was like, oh, you vlog, you got to excited. So that's good. Like, people know what vlogging is. Exactly. Good, I'm glad. You have to get to know Jason. Then you can be internet famous. Or just subscribe. And you can, like, no one watches my video. You're not talking to me. It was like, three no, people. Don't worry. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. There's some people who watch my video. I get, like, pretty views. Yeah, yeah. oh. But it's not, I don't vlog to, to get an audience. I vlog for my own personal gain, you know? Okay. Then you'll so, like, always remember me as a girl who can't get your name. Oh, and the girl who lost her phone. Yeah, but that's not your fault. Like, that's not your fault. So, the, but yeah, I'll know you as the girl who forgot my name. Because it's forever documented in the video. But anyway, we're sitting in this nice bar here and it's pretty crowded right now. I'm getting hungry. We're going to the old spaghetti factory for dinner. Hey, uh, Am I in the shot? Yeah. Awkward. Okay, hi. <laughs> so awkward, yeah. Um, so, are you hungry? Can I have your can I have your dish? No. What are you gonna do with it? Eat it. Wait, you're not hungry. What if I get hungry afterwards? True, fair enough, fair enough. Alright, but I'm getting tired, so I can stop. Alright, that's me, Cindy. Who has captured the essence of the conference through their pictures and amazing Kodak moments? We would like to call upon Mark Nguyen, who has gone above to beyond to make these Apex moments in pictures that memories that will be captured for <laughs> 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 The guy with the camera, the guy with the camera has to use his camera. Thank you, thank you. Every year I come here, I'm amazed at how talented you guys are. Every year, um, yeah, uh, you know, our country has such a bright future. Uh, if you guys put your head down and work very hard. Um, you know, when Greg was up here talking, I was actually thinking about something that happened um, when India was in grade 10. Uh, she came home one day and said, Daddy, um, what would you think if some friends and I got together and go down to Central America to help build a school? I thought, wow, <coughs> I'd be very proud. You know, I'd help in whatever way. And she said, but I said, now, Andy, where is the school? She was in this tiny little village, and we, our friends of us would like to go. So I said, well, you realize you have to live in the village, and these villages don't have running water, you have outdoor washrooms. Oh, no, 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 we'll go back to the five-star hotel at the end of the night and stay. I go, no, 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 that's not how it works. So she stopped, and being empathetic as she was, uh, stopped and two minutes later said, you know, Daddy, we were looking at this village, and all the, the kids, they go to this dump site, and they, you know, they're always picking for food and things to sell. It was so sad, it made me want to cry. Can I go to the mall for a new outfit tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the empathy that comes out of my house. <laughs> Hi, all right, so well, that includes, let me just set my camera up here. All right, that includes the Apex Weekend. Great weekend, three days, Thursday to Sunday. Just got home now and I'm running on like five hours of sleep because I stayed up pretty damn late last night. Um, a bunch of us ended up just chilling out until like 5 a.m. So that was a great way to end the Apex weekend. And it was a, uh, a few days full of great memories, amazing food, um, listening to great industry professionals, meeting wonderful people, um, having amazing laughs along the way. Very memorable, def definitely. And I would most likely be applying next year at the delegate delegate again because um it's uh, an experience that you w would always want to uh, have again and uh, no doubt it's uh, definitely an eye-opener to a lot of things you learn great lessons take away invaluable skills like i said meet amazing people like both um expanding your 
personal network of, uh, of friends among different schools and even within your school as well as uh, professionals in the industry. So that's something I'm, uh, I'm happy I went to, although it did um, break me from my routine of normal school for a few days. I couldn't study um, as I was at the conference the entire time. So, but that's okay because today, um, hopefully I can catch myself up a bit more and this week it's going to be a busy week, obviously, because um, that's, the, that's how it usually works, right? When you're off for a few days, things tend to pick up a lot more afterwards. Anyways, um, it's gonna like, this video did contain, why am I explaining at the end of the video? That's weird. Anyways, yeah, like the video contained like all three days rather than a video every day because they didn't have Wi-Fi access there and it's just better to kind of uh, gather all the footage in one nice video to um, present the entire experience of Apex 2014. So, hope you enjoyed it.